Hello and what's up guys? In the previous video, I have wrote the source code for the publisher node and today I'm going to continue uh, with writing the source code for the subscriber node and then I will talk about the CMake documentation and I will introduce you to the most commonly used commands there uh, in order to prepare you to write the CMakeList.txt file. So I advise you to watch this video to the end and uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification button to stay updated. So let's start. Okay, uh, so in order to avoid like repeating myself, I have already wrote the uh, source code for the uh, subscriber node and it is very similar to the publisher uh, node the source code but with minor differences so let me open the terminal here and let me open VS code and as you can see this is the lambda.cpp but this time this is the subscriber not the publisher node as you can see the code is the same but I will tackle the main differences uh, so as you can see I didn't include the chrono uh, or the string library because I didn't use any string methods or anything related to time actually uh, also I used here a placeholder uh, and actually this one is used in the bind uh, method and I have talked about this uh, in the previous video uh, and uh, I told you that this uh, uh, like placeholder is used if you want to bind this callback method with a certain argument uh, and this will, si uh, will signify the first argument and as you can see in the definition of the callback method you will have only one argument w which is the message. Uh, another big difference is like uh, in the definition of the uh, subscription pointer in order to obtain this pointer, I have used the create subscription, which has like different API from the create, uh, from the create publisher uh, node, if you remember. Um, and uh, actually the main difference is that I didn't uh, like create a wall timer in here. Uh, all the timer uh, stuff uh, are related to the publisher node. In here, you uh, include in your create subscription method, the bind method. Uh, that includes the callback uh, function uh, and here you have the topic name and here as I told you before this is the uh, message queue depth and one thing to note here is that uh, I don't want to cover this in my tutorials because this is out of the scope uh, of what I'm talking about uh, but if you know more uh, some stuff about networking uh, feel free to play around with the settings of the quality of service uh, like the reliability the durability etc but I need you to note that in Rust 2 you should uh, pick your quality of service settings uh, in such a way that they will be compatible uh, um, between the subscriber and the publisher nodes otherwise they will not communicate together and actually this was not this did not exist in the uh, ROS one because uh, in ROS one as long as you have the same topic name and the same type of messages the publisher and the subscriber nodes will be compatible and will communicate together but this is not the case in ROS 2 uh, obviously here I didn't play with the cost settings uh, I, le I left them uh, as default uh, I only played with the uh, with the depth uh, of the message queue uh, and as you can see I put it 5 in here and in the publisher I put it as 10 so they, sh they shouldn't be the same not necessarily uh, but the other uh, settings should be picked in a way that the uh, nodes will be compatible uh, and uh, uh, as in the publisher code I use the uh, uh, rclcpp info uh, macro if you remember and I have initiated activated the node and shut down now uh, let me like demonstrate uh, the functionality of this subscriber node so in order to do that let me close this terminal uh, 
I will be here in my uh, overlay. I open the terminal. Uh, of course, I need to use Culkin build in order to build my packages. And here we go. I should open a new terminal window. This is advisable. Uh, in order to source my packages, I will go here, open a new terminal, and then I will source my packages using the local bash, uh, local setup, sorry, dot bash. And I will open a new window and I will source my package again all right now i can initiate or activate uh, my publisher and my subscriber nodes let me copy this and paste it in here and the uh, one that i wrote was called according to the cmake list.txt file publisher lambda and here we go as for the subs uh, for the subscriber uh, i will use rust to run same thing basically all right and it was called subscriber lambda okay so as you can see it will listen to uh, the messages that are published by the publisher node. Now enough uh, from uh, like all this work, let me jump into the CMake documentation. Now, uh, of course, feel free to uh, read more about the API uh, documentation of the uh, uh, CMake. Uh, and I will uh, attach all, I will include all the information in the description down below. Uh, but I will go over the main commands that will be used uh, in the next couple of tutorials, and you will encounter them most probably uh, frequently in your work uh, while developing in Rust 2. So, first, uh, you need to use the command project and uh, include the name of your project, or in other words, the name of your package. And I have told you about this in an earlier video. This name should be the same as the one in the package.xml specifying the name of the package. Uh, you will use also the uh, CMake minimum required uh, to specify the minimum version uh, required for your uh, CMake. Uh, it depends on the code that you have written uh, and everything. Apparently, I messed up the numbering. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, you can use also down the way, uh, you can use uh, the message command if you want to print any message uh, while uh, the building process is being uh, done. Uh, you will have the error uh, and this will print basically uh, a message, but at the same time, it will throw an exception during the building process. So just as a reminder, the cmakelist.txt uh, is responsible for the policies to be followed while building your package after writing your source code for the executable or the library that you want to build. Now for the add executable command, let's say you want to build a certain executable. For example, in our case, it was the Lambda subscriber or Lambda publisher, if you remember. Uh, and these files had like uh, the .cpp uh, files, uh, the source codes written in C++. So of course you need to specify the executable name in this case and uh, the source files that are used in order to build it. And of course in addition to the .cpp file you can include .hpp files or header files in other case that are used. Now, the same thing should be done if you want to build a certain library, but instead you use the command add library, you put the library name and the source files. Now, for the add subdirectory command, so let me put it this way. If you have a certain uh, cmakelist.txt file, let's call it the primary uh, cmakelist, and a second uh, file, uh, let's call it the uh, secondary cmakelist, 
uh, and let's assume that in your primary file you are building a certain executable or a certain library but down the way you need a, another library to be built because you need to use it okay so uh, but sometimes uh, you you might encounter different types of architectures so for example this library that you need is defined in a certain directory on its own and it has its own cmakeless.txt file which we call the secondary file uh, so if you want the flow of control to go from the primary to the secondary file in order to execute it and build the library that you need, you need to include the directory of the cmakeless.txt uh, secondary file uh, here uh, in the add subdirectory command. Now uh, for the variables inside the cmakeList.txt file, uh, they are defined by a name as any uh, other uh, language. Uh, but if you want to access their values, you need to put their names in curly braces and precede it by a dollar sign, like this. Now, of course, you can set uh, the value of the variable as one value, or you can put uh, a set of values separated by space. Uh, and in this case, you will define a list if you want. Uh, now, after defining a certain list, if you want, let's say, to iterate over each element in order to do something, to, to process something over each element, you need to use the uh, for each loop. Uh, and in here, you will put the iterator, uh, whatever, like a, uh, like i or index. And here, you will put the value of the variable. Uh, and as you can see, uh, you will access its value using the curly braces and the dollar sign. And of course, you will close the loop using the end for each. And I will talk over the uh, loops inside cmakeList.txt file uh, in, a, in the later or in the next video. Now, uh, this command is very important, the target, the target link libraries. Uh, and actually, like uh, sometimes if you want to build a certain executable or build a certain library, of course, you will use the add executable and the add library commands and to build such executables or such entities, let's say, against their source files. But sometimes you won't have access, let's say, to the source file. But luckily, you will have access to the library that you need. So in this case, you will need to use the target link library to allow the linker to produce a certain executable where it puts all of your sources, all of the libraries that you will need uh, inside one executable uh, file uh, for your executable or target executable or target library or whatever. Now for the find package, sometimes you might need to use a certain package. Now the system can find this package for you if you use the command find package and you provide its name. Uh, under one condition that this package has uh, .cpp uh, or sorry .cmake uh, binary files and these type of files I've talked about them in a previous video if you remember when I used Colkin build and uh, the Colkin system created like the uh, build directory inside of it uh, we had the, the .cmake files that were needed to build our final package so if this package has these files now it can be found by the system otherwise you need to put the full path uh, for uh, this package uh, in order uh, to allow the system uh, to find it and therefore to use it. Uh, but actually, in such case, it will defeat the purpose. The main purpose is actually to put just its name and I will tell you why. Because after using the find package command, the following variables will be automatically filled. Uh, let me go over them. You will have the package name, whatever it is, uh, followed by the name found and the underscore, and this is a variable name. Now, this variable is a Boolean that will be set to true or false, uh, whether uh, or it depends uh, if uh, the system found the package or not. It will attract this. Now, you will have the package name followed by include directories or uh, includes with a S. Uh, and this actually, this variable will contain the full path to the directory in which all the header files that are needed to build this package are needed. And actually, I've talked about this uh, directory in a previous video. 
Uh, now you will have the package name followed by libraries uh, or uh, libs in this case, and it will contain the full path to the library that you have just found. Now, these variables are essential because after using the command find package, you will need to use such variables. Let me give you an example. You will need to use them uh, in the target link library command per se, uh, where you need like uh, to put the full path to the library that is needed to build your target executable, let's say. Uh, so this is very needed. Uh, now, if you don't like it, if you feel like it's not clean or neat, you can, uh, instead of putting the full path uh, of uh, the uh, library that you need uh, to use, you can use include directories and link directories commands respectively in order to add the directory uh, in which you have your header files that are needed uh, or the library files that are needed respectively uh, and you will put these in uh, the search pool of the system so the system can automatically uh, go there and find your needed libraries and direct and header files again this command is for the header files and this command the link directories is for the library files uh, now uh, just a final note uh, if you use the add library or the add subdirectory in order to build a certain library needed uh, by for your package, let's say, uh, in this case, if you use target link libraries, you don't need to refer to the library that has been built uh, using its full path. You just put you just put its name, uh, and the system will automatically identify it. Now, in the next video, I will talk more about uh, like uh, some concepts similar to the ones found in the C++ language. And also, I will talk about some essential variables uh, inside CMake. Uh, so, for this video, I hope you loved it. And I bid you farewell. And I hope to see you guys later on.